Hello again, everybody. I'm Jamie. And I'm Joan. And I'm Justin. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. If you're a big Elvis fan like us, this is your society, our society, the EAP Society. If you're enjoying the EAP Society, be sure to like, share, comment uh, on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We hit 20,000 subscribers. We're going to give away this Elvis-owned item. You can also become a member if you'd like to help us out even further. Go to EAPsociety.com and click on Become a Member. Uh, members get early videos, ad-free videos, extended videos, exclusive content, and a whole bunch more. Um, I am wearing something that's a little more akin to my normal stage attire for my shows as opposed to an Elvis thing uh, because uh, this is a really really cool little movie we just got done watching yeah. this is Never Been to Graceland the collector's cut I like that very well done <laughs> and uh, we are here with Justin Gosman and uh, he is the brainchild behind this wonderful movie this wonderful short film and uh, one of my original modern style songs is in this. Looks like the end is near. Though baby save those tears. Cause I'll be coming back and you will see me again. And we will find a way to meet again someday. And I was really happy to uh, be a part of it and it's been a while since I've seen it, and uh, you know what? I mean, I liked it even better this time than I did the first time I saw it. So, first off, well done, Justin. Yeah, thank you. This I was is really, really impressed with this. I liked it really, really good. The the chemistry with the people is really good. This is very smooth, really, really cool, and especially collectors and huge Elvis nerds are going to get a big kick out of this. And it touches on, it's funny, it, this, uh, pardon me for the thing here, this touches on in narrative form what John and I talk about a lot. Right. Different things that we talk about on the channel uh, about uh, the way Elvis fans are perceived versus the way a lot of Elvis fans are. And really cool. So first off, thank you for, uh, yeah, thank you for this. This is really, really cool. Thank you yeah. for taking the time to watch it. Thank you for allowing me to use, you know, coming back to you in the in the film. Thank um, you. It really made the the ending kind of click in a really nice way. So, uh, so I got a question for you. What was the genesis of this film? What made you want to make a short film about Elvis? <laughs> well, it it really comes back to I wanted to. It, it's it's interlocked with a lot of the stuff that we've talked about about where TCB cast came from. Right. I had wanted to do a video review series that was it became Blue Suede Reviews, and there was a, a, a grains of sand in the idea of the the germ of that series where it was going to have. I I think I mentioned it was going to be more comedic originally. It was going to have more sketches and things like that. Well, the whole gist of it was that. It would eventually lead to after I got through all the movies. Originally, it would end with like a s extended sketch of me as the reviewer going to hunt a long lost Elvis movie. Right, and it was gonna be up your nose. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And it was just gonna be this goofy, like tongue in cheek thing. Not serious. Didn't expect anybody to see it. Right. Uh, and then. Uh, I didn't start Blue Suede Reviews at that time. I had the original idea 2012, I think. And I just sat on it for so long. <laughs> and I kept mulling over the idea of taking that other bit of it, the, the end part that wasn't the reviews, and turning that into something. And then it evolved over the years into what is something that I actually want to say about Elvis yeah uh, and do it in a in a narrative form because I've always been fascinated by storytelling and I I wanted to be a writer and a director and whether that was theater whether that was film something like that just trying trying different formats of storytelling right and so I I wanted to make and kind of prove to myself that I could make something like yeah. that and I, I did make some, you know, very low budget stuff with some local kids that was just sure. goofy or whatever. But I wanted to do something that was a little more serious and that really said something that I felt strongly about. And so it eventually evolved into what became Never Been to Graceland. Yeah. I tell you, one of the things that really resonated with me about this film is that you sort of show there's sort of like a bifurcated portrayal of Elvis fandom. Yeah. There's one where it's just the icon and the sort of the, 
um, this sort of ritualized uh, idol worship, yes. maybe. Yeah. yeah. And on the other hand, you've got the guy who's into music and he's an Elvis fan. And like yeah. that resonates with me because one of the things a lot of people don't understand is for people like me, Elvis was sort of the Rosetta Stone of music yeah. for me. Yeah. I found so many people that I wouldn't have otherwise listened to who I love because of Elvis Presley. Yeah. yeah. He introduced me to Arthur Crudup and the Harmonizing Four and yeah. uh, the Platters and all of these other people yeah. that I... Who, Roy whose music, Hamilton. Roy Hamilton. Yeah. Whose music has enriched my life. Yes. yes. You know? Yeah. So, like, that's part of my love for Elvis as yeah. well. Yeah, though that, that's, you know, that was part of when I was writing it, I was thinking about how Elvis fans had always been depicted in whether that was TV movies, whether that was documentaries. Yeah. Jamie, I know you've talked about how at Elvis events, pe you know, the media would go for the zaniest ones. Yeah, yeah. And that's where that character comes from. You know, it's the it's the one with the Elvis didn't die, you know, he just went yeah. to a better place. Right. right, right. Type shirt. <laughs> and Elvis is not dead, he just went home. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, on air, I loved that, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no, I totally understand. You know, the, they, they would, they would, they would find out, they would seek out those people and in an attempt to make Elvis fans look as much like freaks or as much like a side show as possible right so that way they would not be taken seriously essentially yeah and there's an elvis tribute character who is very much the stereotyp typical elvis impersonator yeah. yeah you know in the public consciousness of like he doesn't look anything like elvis right isn't even trying to look like elvis right right as the cheapest possible jumpsuit yeah, yeah. it's a halloween <laughs> costume right 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 um but so he shows up. The The gist of the plot is that they're on the hunt for this long-lost Elvis recording that's apparently surfaced with this older gentleman who claims that he has a, a long-lost rehearsal recording from 1969. Yeah. Here, actually, I tell you what. We'll read this for everybody. Yeah. When aging former musician Larry Belasco... Uh, so let me... Man... What, uh, the lighting is kind of odd because everything's coming at us. So <laughs> Harland Allen claims he has discovered a long-lost Elvis recording. A determined fan, Stephen, how do you pronounce it? Ferugia. Ferugia. And a journalist, Bridget Hill, team up to uncover the truth before a collector, David Scott, snatches the recording up to hide away for himself. Carefully blending comedic elements with drama, Never Been to Graceland is imbued with a heartwarming theme about the power of music to change lives. Special features, deleted and extended scenes, director commentary on film and deleted scenes, TCB cast commentary featuring uh, Gurdip Ladar, uh, Gurdip Ladar, and uh, director Justin Gosman, uh, behind-the-scenes footage and bloopers, original trailer, and new archival featurettes and galleries. Yeah. So we're going to show that while you're sorry, continue. Yeah. No. It, it's so as the plot sort of summarizes there, the just the little gist of it. It's about all these fans sort of converging on this guy's house and trying to vie for who who can get this recording. Uh, and at the end of the day, we're sort of following this character because there's a journalist character who's been assigned to write about the story and cover right. it. And so she's the one who's actually going, there are all these different types of Elvis fans. Uh who are these people who are actually showing up at this guy's house right. and yeah. what are their stories and what's, what's, what makes them tick. And she finds this fascination with the character of Michael, who is just a typical like music fan who just happens to like Elvis a lot and happens to like Elvis's influences a lot. Yeah. And she meets him at a record store where there's some illusions that maybe he's gone through rough times recently and is maybe on the other side of it. But now he's back into, I'm an Elvis fan. I want to check this out. I've heard about this tape. There's something about it that sits with him where he's like, there's a chance this could actually be real. And there, it's sprinkled throughout, like, is it real? Is it not? Why is the estate not involved? Why is the record company not involved? Do they not believe that it's real? It, just to get your kind of questions going of, hmm, what is this real or not? Right. But it's enough for him to go just to see. Right? Yeah. And then there's a collector who is, you know, the epitome of the Elvis collector who just holds on to the most valuable stuff and never lets anyone see it or hear it. Has his own personal black hole. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I tell you, um, not as someone who's been in the collector world a lot. Yeah, I know a lot, lots of these types of people. You know, and they're all very nice people. They're very interesting people. Yeah, but like, there is this kind of mentality where you go in to get that stuff, and it's almost like, I gotta have it. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. so much so that, like, I've known collectors get pissed off when another collector gets something mm-hmm. good, you know? Mm-hmm. But, like, uh, t- to me, my, my approach has been, like, okay, you're asking these people to sell their personal memories of Elvis. Yeah. If they don't want to sell it to you, like, can you blame them? I wouldn't sell them if I had them. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, and I'm always of the thing, well... I take the Indiana Jones mentality. It belongs in a museum. Yeah. It needs to be shared and seen by the public. To me, that's where it has the most value. Right. Is if if everybody gets a chance to hear it. We will come back in just a little bit. Stay tuned. All right. We are back and we are talking about Never Been to Graceland, the collector's cut. I, I, I got to point out one of my favorite scenes uh, that I, I have to describe to everybody because yeah. I, I thought this was mwah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So there's a scene uh, where uh, the main character is in a record store and there's this sort of cute girl who's browsing through the records and they sort of do this flirting thing where like she pulls out a copy of Sergeant Pepper and he's like, yeah, okay, yeah. And then he pulls out a copy of Elvis today and she's like, oh, no, <laughs> like I'm out of here. That's like the ultimate test. Yeah. yeah. That's the ultimate test if you're out and about. <laughs> as soon as she pulled out the Sergeant Pepper, I'm thinking, just just walk away, man. You're not going <laughs> to like Sergeant Pepper. Oh, no, no, it's not about that. Yeah. It's that the person, it just a lot of folks that there are very few folks that are that like sergeant pepper who will then you know look at elvis there's there's a lot of there's animosity on both sides of the elvis beatles divide we have some we have some viewers of the channel that like both and you guys are awesome and we like both Mm -hmm. you know we we enjoy both the beatles and elvis but there's a very large contingent like if you see him pull out a beatles record Elvis is not going to be on their radar of wanting anything to do with yeah. that. Like, that's it's sad how often that's true. Yeah. If you can't, uh, if you can't love me at my pieces of my life, you don't deserve me at my hound dog, right? <laughs> I love it exactly. Hey, I love pieces of my life. It's a yeah, masterpiece. Same. It's uh, yeah. one of those tracks. I always say, if people get Elvis in the seventies, you gotta love that song. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Can't love me at my Dominic. That's the <laughs> my yoga is as yoga does. But uh, yeah, so there. Part of the goal was to for me to feel out all the things that I've been absorbing as an Elvis fan over all these years and trying to unpack because I had no outlet for it. Yeah. TCB Cash wasn't a thing. Yeah. And by the time we were filming, I had started Blue Suede Reviews, and then it just went wildly off the rails. And I didn't really have another outlet for it. And I didn't I didn't know people like you guys. Right. You know, I didn't have anyone to talk to about Elvis in quite the same way. And to unpack my own feelings. The the best I had were some of the fan forums. Yeah. And there's so many strong personalities on those. Yeah. And some of that is reflected in some of these characters. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I totally clocked that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it definitely speaks to it definitely speaks to an experience that I'm also familiar with, but you can, you can, I can very much see the, the pieces that make up the perspective that informs the film, certainly, yeah. which is, which is cool. Yeah. So it, it really was just me trying to feel out what I feel and what I felt about the Elvis fandom, mm-hmm. how it was, has been portrayed in cinema, in television, in, in shows or whatever. And my experience of just being an Elvis fan and, and trying to, just live with all that noise around you right. and where do you fit within that yeah. and maybe not feeling like you have a place for that. Yeah. Right. And that's where the character of Michael is coming from is that perspective where he's, he's got this one thing that his, his lifeline in a literal sense Yeah. and it's music. But critically it is a song that's associated with Elvis, but it's another artist who sang it. Right. And that becomes the crux of this other thing that happens in the story where he's telling the journalist, 
you're writing all this stuff about Elvis, maybe you're not getting it. Yeah. You know, you're not getting the Elvis thing. And so he hands her, you know, some Elvis records, but then he also hands her Roy Hamilton's You'll Never Walk Alone. Yeah. The LP. And that is just... That's just straight me loving Roy Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, but it's There's like nothing wrong with that. I can't believe you at all, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's like you were talking about John, where Elvis is this Rosetta Stone, and he leads you to these artists whose music impacts your life. Yeah, and moves you in a in a particular way. And I I just wanted to do a short film or a story of some sort that just kind of worked through my feelings about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it speaks to that incredibly well, honestly. Yeah. Agree, you know. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so ultimately at the end, you never really find out if the recording is real. Like the, the characters, I mean, spoiler alert, they get the tape. You, you know, I'm not going to leave you hanging there. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave you hanging a little bit later. <laughs> I'll tell you how I briefly imagined it ending because I knew a Jamie song was in here but I didn't know how it was used <laughs> I thought that the, the rich guy was going to buy the tape and play it and it was going to go damn it Jamie <laughs> <laughs> okay that's I, that's glorious yeah. I love that the, uh, so the, the song is from my 2016 album Coming Back or yeah I Love the World Away the song is called Coming Back to You and it's very much a more of a modern pop type of a thing and it's used for the end credits and it's really it was really really fun and it was, it was really neat to, to be a part of that the uh i was half expecting them to put the thing in the machine and have the machine eat the tape <laughs> oh my god that would have sickened me yeah uh, even like as an elvis collector even yeah. in an imaginary world that hurts yeah. me yeah <laughs> I have flashbacks of RCA tape fires from 1959, right? Oh, God. Uh, oh, man. That's, yeah. that's too funny. <laughs> um, but the one thing that, that changed, and Gurdip and I have kind of talked about this briefly, because the last time that I actually sat and watched this before sitting down with you guys was when Gurdip and I recorded our commentary for it. And then I just slapped all that into this package, which the, yeah. this, the TCB cast commentary wasn't even on the thing that was given out at the premiere and stuff for, you know, the people who were in it and yeah. all things like that. And so I just kind of threw this thing together. Our Patreon backers, some of them at certain tiers have gotten, you know, this kind of thing of it, but it's not available. It's just always, it's out there on YouTube. Okay. For a while I had it on Amazon prime. It's not on there now. Okay. Um, but one thing that we talked about, Gradeep and I, is that I did have a subplot cut where you would learn that the journalist actually had really been into Elvis as a young girl hmm. and would have layered in this whole other thing where Elvis was her connection to her father. Mm. And it was just too much for the short. Yeah. 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 It was, there was, yeah, too many, um, too many personal references. Plus I do kind of like the idea of, the journalist kind of being in every journalist that yeah. every Elvis that Elv that Elvis fans have come across, right? Where it's like, and I love that he, I I love that he clocks the whole. What are you gonna say? Oh, Elvis fans all shook up over new Elvis recording, <laughs> yeah. and he's like, because it's so tired, and every journalist does it because it's low hanging fruit. And hey, as a person that loves grabbing that kind of stuff when it comes to humor, uh, I can understand. But man. When it comes to journalism, there's got to be a higher bar. Yeah. Like, there's just, oh, man. Higher bar? Have you seen American journalism? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's got to be better than, you I know. say this is somebody who works at a paper. I mean, right, go on. yeah. Like, there's got to be something better than, like, you know, uh, Reddit bylines or something. You know? <laughs> the, uh, um, but, yeah, or BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed headlines or something like that. But, no, the... And I like that. I, I think that's really good because, you know, I think every Elvis fan is maybe wanted to say to, you know, an idiot reporter is like, you don't get it. Mm -hmm. And kind of takes it. No, I, I like I, I think that's a good choice. Honestly. Maybe yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can understand the, the draw of something like that, but I think I think you made the right decision. 
Yeah, and that was my biggest thing editing it was that we had shot all this footage of this subplot and it just wasn't coming together in the edit. I was like, there's just, it's going on too long and there's just, but it was carrying from an earlier draft where it was so much longer. It was almost going to be a feature length. Okay. And it was just like, I was holding on to these babies. Yeah. That you just like, you fall in love with that storyline and then you're just like, that's not the core of the story. Yeah. Right. That's not what it's actually about. Yeah. And once I sat down and kind of thought about it more and was just like, the story is actually about what I have to say about Elvis and what these characters think about Elvis. It's not about yeah. her thing with her father and right. yeah. their connection over Elvis. Like, she's not the main character. She's a side character. And it does, it could have informed better, you know, where she's you know maybe has a resistance to elvis right that there was maybe some bad blood with the father or something like that but it, it all of that was so far in the past of the, the making of it that it was just like this is pointless right you know and that's you know bridget who played aj did a fantastic job in the scenes that got cut and it's a shame because there's wonderful performances in there right but it just wasn't what the short needed and um David Scott and Harland Allen, like they they did the scenes together at the house. He's the collector, and and Harlan is the uh, the older gentleman. Yeah, and they were so pro about the whole thing. They came in, they knew all their lines. Just it was the easiest shoot day that we I think ever had on the hmm. entire thing. Um, and overall, like I just I'm proud that it got made. And we got it into a film festival up in South Dakota. That's, that's awesome. Um, the Black Hills Film Festival. Nice. And so that was the only place that it really screened outside of the initial like premieres of it. And then I just put it out online yeah. and just kind of quietly put it out there. And I was just kind of like, well, if people will find it, maybe they're the right people to find it. Sure. You know? And so I haven't really like done any pushing of it, okay. promoting or anything like that. It's just a thing that I, I made because I needed to make it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I get that, man. I totally get that. Yep. So now did you now the it being on YouTube, that's what you put? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So are you okay with this with the oh, Yeah, okay. absolutely. So we'll put this in the we'll put this in the link so you all can check it out because I think it's I think it's really cool and I I think a lot of Elvis fans will get a kick out of it. I really do. Oh, definitely. I mean, I I'm serious. I'm not not blowing smoke, nothing like that. I, and yeah. without spoiling anything, there's lots of Elvis Easter eggs that if you're an Elvis nerd, yes. you will appreciate. Yeah. Big we, time. There's so many that were tucked in that I think you guys probably wouldn't have even clocked. Like, there's posters hanging on the walls at the record store. Yeah. There's ones that you could never guess. Like, the blue records in the... This is just... The record store was just like this. There's the red, white, and blue records in the in the window. All the blue ones are moody blue. Ah! <laughs> that's cool. You know, and that, that was just... Like, we just happened to be at the record store. That's where we got the location. And that's just how the store was set up. All They had this red, white, and blue display, and so they had moody blue for their blue records. That's, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. But there's so Elvis is just all over there in the background. And um, yeah, I had a lot of fun making it. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful to everyone who participated in the making of it and helped make it possible. Ryan uh, Brewer, who was the, uh, he plays the Elvis impersonator in the film, but he was also the director of cinematography. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he kind of uh, was there for the whole thing, the whole way through. And his buddy, uh, kind of brother from another mother, Keith. We call him Colonel Keith in the Yeah, in the I noticed. Yeah. He was just, he, he played everything that we needed him for. He was there. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm i really proud of it. And I am I thank you guys for, you know, taking a, a, a look at it. Yeah, you should be really proud of it. It's really good. It's yeah, really, really you. good. If, I'm, if yeah. you're an Elvis fan, lots that this little film says will speak to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big time. No, it's cool. It's really cool. So we're like I said, we're gonna have it in the description and for everybody to check out. The uh, we've got just a little bit more we're gonna talk about, and we're gonna do that after we come back. All right, we are back, and we are talking about Never Been to Graceland, the collector's cut. This is very cool. We were talking with uh, Justin Gosman. And uh, now, so these are not, are these available for anyone to get? Uh, yes. Uh, again, uh, on the TCB cast Patreon, I've kind of had it as a freebie. If you're in a certain tier for a certain amount of time, okay. I'll send one. Um, but that's really kind of the only thing that I've done with it. 
because it is out there on YouTube, you know, if people yeah. really want to see it. For a while, I did have the all the bonus features up on my YouTube channel, just my private YouTube channel. Right, right. And then I was like, this doesn't need to be up here. Nobody's watching this. So it, it, I took it down, but not for any, like, negative reason or anything like right. that. I was just, like, cleaning up my channel. And okay. I was just like, eh, eh, who's paying attention to this? But... Yeah, so it, it's out there. People can check it out. There's there's not that much more to it than just what the short is. Uh, again, we have those extended scenes, deleted scenes. There's a bit more discussion that AJ and Michael have. Like they talk about Elvis in concert from '77. Okay. Because the whole gist, we shot it in Rapid City. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were originally planning to draw that in a little more. Okay. Yeah. I was well, I was going to ask about that actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there was going to be, and the original gist of when it was a lot longer was that it was they were actually traveling from Omaha to Rapid City. Okay. You know, and yeah, you get the gist of like, okay, they're in South Dakota, Nebraska-ish. Yeah. But it's not as specific. Okay. But, yeah, I I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> what else more to say. I'm yeah. just, uh, it. The, I think why I'm struggling right now is the, the again, I, I think I mentioned this, the first time I've watched this in three years. Yeah. And... There's a lot of it that came from a very personal place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not autobiographical by any means, right. but there's certain things that obviously were carried forward from very personal experiences. Of course. You know, as you guys know, as creatives, you, you put in things that are taken from your real life and you put that into the art. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And so there's moments in there that were things that I was experiencing or had experienced in the years before that that were very personal yeah and so watching it again kind of just took me back sure yeah in in a good way but also in a "Mm, mm, okay i'm in a different place now yeah than i was back then yeah and i'm sure you get that with your music big time yeah well what's funny is uh so when we were looking at the double features i own two of the friggin reel that has the four discs in it and the little Elvis King rock and roll pin and the booklet. I think I might have been able to find the booklet, but I cannot find the I two of them. Yeah, and no idea where they are. We tore all that. We went over to um, you know, we went over to my place and tore all that. Nowhere. I don't understand. I don't know where it went. It doesn't make any damn sense. I don't. I could get like one of them going missing, but two of them doesn't make any sense oh, to me. I was just gonna say that just shows you that it doesn't help to have duplicates if they're both in the same place and go missing. <laughs> yeah, well, but they're not. They're in two different places, and they still both went missing. <laughs> you know, and so like um, anyway. So my point with that was, as I'm over, at, as I'm over at our place, and I'm just tearing through this catch-all room that's got a lot of stuff that we're putting on eBay and whatever. And uh, it's basically stuff that we've had forever. But there's also, like, the, a lot of books and a lot of other stuff that we're not selling. Anyway, so I'm going through everything. It's like, oh, you know what? You know what? I'm going through every tub. I'm going through things that are on top of tubs, tubs underneath tubs, and everything else. And I found um, I found a little, uh, a small little jewelry thing that had... A bracelet with my name on it with crazy on the back and some of the rings and stuff that are not Elvis related that mm. I w- wore that I used to wear for a long time and you know when I changed directions I kind of dropped a lot of that yeah and it's like wow that just kind of you know and it's funny how things kind of like sometimes things come around again yeah and sometimes and in certain ways you know we're, we're there is a little bit of that you know starting up the channel again because like well i guess you know it's there are aspects of some of these things that i miss i want to take in a different direction and be very creative with it which is partially where the movie idea comes from we've got a couple of live show ideas and things but again from you know a unique creative experience and, and like an immersive experience but Sometimes, you know, you see things that you haven't looked at in a long time. You're like, what? okay, wow. You know, and it, it always kind of strikes you a few different ways simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Looking at my old art that, like, I, I do visual art, too, uh, that mm-hmm. I produced in college. Yeah. Uh, now that I've had some distance from it, some of it I'm like, mm. and others I'm like, oh, man, this is even better than I realized then. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I think another thing is, like, for instance, with... Well, with uh, my music on Love the World Away, um, 
I I know a lot more as a mixing and mastering person now than I did then. Yeah, it's not even subtle, but uh, and that and I've used some of those songs on other smaller little EP records and mm -hmm. things, and I have since gone back and like remixed and and all the kind of stuff, the uh, revisionist mixing my own <laughs> crap, and uh, but it's you know it's it's funny like I had that same kind of experience. I was like, gosh, you know like. You get enough of a distance because you get busy doing so many other things, yeah, and, right. and then with COVID, we weren't doing shows for a while and everything else, and and it's like, and so you get enough distance from from something, and you feel like, well, I was a while ago, and then you go back and you listen, and it's like, no, that's, no, I'm, I'm still that still feels that still feels good to me, yeah, and yeah. it's like, yeah, so he's kind of connecting with a lot of different stuff like that. It's been interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, to to be uh, completely honest, I'm extremely grateful that you guys invited me out here. Um, because when I wrote and made Never Been to Graceland, and we were not planning on watching this while I was here, it just sort of came up. Yeah. I brought these to gift to you guys because obviously your song is in there. Yeah. And I didn't want you not to have one. <laughs> um, but we decided, get it later, we decided to sit down and, and watch it. <laughs> and Comment if you know what that's from. Right? <laughs> uh, but in recent times, and I think some of our, our, especially our TCB cast listeners and Patreon backers know that it's been a challenging couple of years for TCB cast. Um, you know, not to, not to speak too much, but Gradeep lost his mom yeah. and, uh, we've had, I've had some health troubles recently related to my eye and stuff like that. Yeah. And with Lisa passing away, I, at, at the beginning of this year, I found myself in a headspace where I was going and trying to reflect, like, why do we do what we do? Yeah. And are we still following our original mission? Yeah. And are, are we doing what is right by yeah. Elvis? Yeah. And by other Elvis fans? And are, are, what, are what we presenting worthwhile right. for Elvis fans? Yeah. It just all those little self-doubts and things yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. And... You guys invited. The answer is yes. What, by the way, thank you. But yeah. <laughs> my wife, uh, you guys invited me out, and we were debating whether or not we were going to come, just because the financial things and things yeah, like that. Yeah, things yeah. come up, whatever. Of course, life. No, 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 it's life. I, yeah, understandable. Uh, yeah. But got to the point where my wife said, "You need this right now," mm. and I didn't know how much I needed it until I was watching that with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it has refocused me just the last couple of days has really refocused me and I've had so many ideas start to come across where I'm just like, Oh, okay. This is what these guys are doing. Here's how I can bounce this off. Right. You know, and here's how here's what we can be doing that is you know, we were already so complimentary yeah. in the ways that so many Elvis creatives are because we're we're yeah drawing from the same well of inspiration yeah right. but we have such different angles yeah. and I t i've talked about before in the original blue suede review like album reviews that i did i was going through this thing yeah, yeah uh that i was in a dark place when i wrote this film and some of that came through in the script and i'm extremely happy that i'm past that mm -hmm. and happy that i'm here Happy I'm here with you guys. And I'm happy and grateful that Elvis has connected us. Yeah. Oh, man. And Me Elvis too. has connected all of us. Exactly. Because it, it gives us something to hang on to. Man, mm -hmm. we're happy that we have you here, too. We yeah. wish we could keep you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, we're going to try to... Um, we're going to uh, go to a commercial just for a minute, but uh, we will come back in just a little bit, and we'll be back one more time with Justin Gosman. Stay tuned. All right, we are back with Justin with TCB Cast, and uh, we've been uh, we've had a really great pleasure to be here the a couple of days. Got to film actually more than we were initially yeah. intending to, which has been amazing. It's been so much fun. Absolutely. And uh, so, as you all know, because I make no bones about the fact that we pre-tape a lot of this stuff, and we do that just for logistics. John lives like uh, twelve hours away ish, and uh, the EAP Society originally was a group of us from about you know four four or five hours away 
everybody was from different places and they would converge on one place because yeah. this was kind of the centralized location. And uh, we would have, we would be watching eight mil. We'd spend the entire weekend watching eight millimeter stuff, uh, listening to the latest Elvis CD, editing together Elvis sessions, you know, everybody bring the, you know, stuff. And it was just this big giant weekend thing that was so much fun. And, you know, I mean, I, you know, there's so much going on. I've not been able to do that the way I want to, the way I've wanted to for a long time. And uh, Jeanette Hathaway, who we, uh, who we uh, attribute all of the episodes to at the end, she was one of the people that came down. She came down from Minnesota. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, she died, she passed of cancer and her daughter is in our members. Mm, so wow. thank you. Uh, you know, thank you, uh, Emma. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, the, uh, we film twice a year. And we film in around May and around October. Hang out. Because this is always like hanging out with your Elvis friends. This right. is the way that we do the show. Right. If we can do that on a larger scale, and you are welcome anytime, anytime we tape, you're welcome to come down. And because, you know, yeah. Because they, uh, where was I going with this? My brain is, it's late, folks, so, you know. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I can jump in there. And kind of what I where I was leading with that is that the... The way that the film ends is it draws it back to the theme of you never walk alone. Yeah. You know? And it's been so nice to be reminded that we aren't alone as Elvis mm -hmm. fans. And, and to feel like I'm connected again uh, and connected with all of our listeners, all the viewers, EAP Society. Uh, it's, you know, the last few years have been tough. You know, like you yeah. said, there's challenges in the world that are beyond everyone's control. Yeah. And it's nice to be reminded that however disconnected you might feel, you are not alone. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. beautiful. Yeah. And I will say this. Um, I mean, I, I know I've said a lot of things. Uh, but uh, that was one of the things that was the most fun for me going to Memphis. You know, like... Um, um, for a lot of fans that weren't able to go, you know, because like the, the, the in the film you talk about like a, the pilgrimage aspect, and a lot mm -hmm. of fans looked at it that way. Oh, I and, don't need. And, to... and it's pointed out directly. He's asked, "Have you been to Graceland? Have right. you been to Memphis?" And he's emphatic, "No." Right, right, right. And and so that's one of the things that was so much fun for such a long time going down to to Memphis because every fan from all walks of life, uh, and you could just. Just because you're Elvis fans, instant friends. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the collector groups have their little clicks and whatever else <laughs> like that, you know. But hey, they got along great with. They've always gotten along great with us. So, yeah. For the most part, at least. So, um, but yeah, and I think that that's, and that's one of the things that we were talking about. We want to do live events. We want to do a live event in Memphis. It's inexpensive for people, but even more so than that, doing something in in a few other places. So that we can find ways that don't cost a whole ton to bring Elvis fans together. So yeah. that way they have something that they can go to specifically that is Elvis centric, that is Elvis nerd centric, um, because there's a lot of impersonator things and all that kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with that, yeah. but uh, but it's it's different. It's like this this kind of nerdage is is got its own kind of bag. Yeah, and yeah, that's. You know, so if we can bring that with more people, you know, through TCB Cast, through EAP Society, and everything else, then you know, then we've done our job. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I guess my final thing is to remind all of our viewers and listeners that you are not alone, and we are here to help walk you through this thing called Elvis. <laughs> and his impact on the world and the history that comes along with him. Yeah. And we're happy to have you. And yeah. we hope that you are happy to invite us into your house and thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. because it, it's time to, you know, you guys spend so much time in, you know, creating the show and creating the content. But it also takes that same amount of time for people to watch it. Right, exactly. And so you're, you know, you're inviting us into your house your car your ears your earbuds yeah. so thank you mm -hmm. for that everyone i could not agree more yep 
Well, that's why we say we always, you know, almost every video, you know, we say we love everybody. We want we want this to be a space for the we want this to be a space for Elvis fans and everybody from all different walks of life and things to come in and maybe they learn something, but if nothing else, they enjoy something yeah. and just, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I keep thinking, I, I keep, I've got Elvis in concert lines in my head, you know, <laughs> just sit back and leave the driving to us, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because it's, uh, you know, because life, life is so short and sometimes, you know, yeah, there are times that we get into deeper topics and we want folks to kind of, think through think through things and kind of maybe uh maybe see something that from a perspective they didn't see before but we also want you to have a good time and have something that just lets you forget life for a while because there's so many things out there that are meant to make you mad meant to keep you angry keep you on the edge and keeps that fight or flight thing so that way you know there's it's used as a means of all kinds of stuff and it and People aren't made to be there their entire lives. Yeah. And that's where those things want to keep you. Um, I, I don't want to get any further into that than that. But like that's where those things want to keep you. And so if we can be the antidote to that, m at least most of the time, so that way you can be calmer, you can feel better, you can, you know, whatever, and realize that, you know, life is too short enjoy yourself let other people enjoy themselves and how they do that and you do that as long as nobody's hurting each other have a good time and enjoy yourself because there's nothing better than doing something that makes you feel good that doesn't hurt anybody man yeah how do you follow that <laughs> mm. that rings a bell i think elvis said something along those lines i'm sure you know something to say uh someone to love something He's to look forward to and something to do what a wonderful life. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Here's the life I'm living. <laughs> uh, but hey, and you know what? That's another thing. Maybe when we get everybody together, if everybody doesn't mind, you know, we had a few people, oh, I'd like to hear the, you know, I'd like to hear some singing or whatever. Like I said, maybe we can all have a big jam or something like that. <laughs> yeah. That would be fun. That'd yeah, be fun. Because cool. everybody, yeah, there's just, there's just something about getting a big group of Elvis fans together. Yeah. We'll get out the Elvis Uno cards or something, too. I don't care. You know, we'll figure it out. But anyway, so uh, you all are just wonderful and keep treating each other well. And that's why we say be good to yourselves and each other because life is too short for anything else. So anyway, I'm Jamie. I'm John. And I'm Justin. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. And thank you very much, uh, Justin Gosman from the TCB cast for being on here with us. And uh, hopefully we can get uh, a couple folks from TCB cast down here. You're deep. This is you, bud. Just get you, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, take a, take a rowboat. <laughs> One of these days we're going to find a way to get the whole gang down here. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I, I love that. So, you know, just plan it now, really, you know, he'll give you the information. It's fine. Um, anyway, so the whole point of the EAP society is make sure that Elvis history is not lost to history and all the differing perspectives. And this honestly is a beautiful perspective, of, uh, for Elvis fans and, uh, go check out the link in the description to go check that out and if it's not in the description remind me so i can put it in the description uh because sometimes you know get busy right uh anyway so go check that out when you can uh but uh really important that elvis history is not lost to history and the perspectives and the information is available to fans in current generations future generations no matter what your budget is because elvis was really big on being accessible for all of his fans no matter what their budget and we like to carry that forward as best we can so um so definitely like, share, comment, subscribe. We are not just a YouTube channel. We're a people-powered movement. That means you. Like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We hit 20,000 subscribers, and we are going to give away this really cool Elvis-owned letter opener from 1956. Elvis owned this until 72, 71, 72. And we're going to give this away when we hit 20,000 subscribers. Somebody's going to win this. So definitely grab that and uh, subscribe, and you could win that for free. Uh, we also have have an Elvis Presley autograph. We have FTDs. We want to give away all kinds of neat stuff. If you want to help our efforts and our endeavors even further, a great way to do that is become a member of the EAP Society. Go to EAPsociety.com, click on become a member. Uh, members get early videos, ad-free videos, extended videos, bonus videos, exclusive content, and more. We're looking at some really cool ways to uh, help Elvis fans along and further their uh, further their education and their collection and do some really neat and interesting ways. So check that out if you can. Really appreciate 
appreciate it. So we put out content on Tuesday for Quick Take Tuesday and of course our main channel content on Friday. So until the next video, be good to yourselves. Don't be cruel to each other. I love it. And always, TCB. TCB. My society, my society, here with all the friends I want to see. Don't need no high society to get me where I want to be. My society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me.